Welcome to Show Studio. Thank you for making the time to join us on a Saturday afternoon. But it's a very um, worthwhile reason to be here because we're going to be talking about J.W. Anderson, who's obviously one of the kind of bright stars of London and, and one of the designers that everyone really gets excited about, and um, with good with good reason because he's absolutely brilliant. But actually, I've got a brilliant panel with me as well to talk about what he's going to do this season for his women's wear. But I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, Katie. Um, hi, my name is Katie Barron. I'm a writer and journalist, and I work for a, a creative intelligence agency called Stylus. Hi, I'm Frances Corner, and I'm head of the London College of Fashion. And obviously, people know J.W. Anderson as a graduate. I'm Belle Jacobs. I'm a freelance fashion writer. And I'm Marion Hume, and I'm the international fashion editor of the Australian Financial Review. You stole my first question, Francis, because I was going to say, <coughs> J.D. Anderson is um, an alumni of London College of Fashion. You must be incredibly proud of him. Yeah, no, very, very proud. And I think what's so interesting as well, and one of the things we talk about quite a lot within the college, is, is mm. students understanding the complexity of the industry and the mm. interrelationship. And I think what's so interesting about him is obviously he was a, a, a menswear graduate yeah. who's moved into women's wear. And, and I think he really is of that moment, that whole idea about, you know, he's not really doing androgynous. I mean, it's mm. about the sort of mixing or the mm. idea that you can wear each other's clothes, which is not the same thing. And exactly. I think that's a new way of thinking about fashion, a new way of thinking about the industry mm. um, and I also see him very much as somebody who is a, in a way almost like a creative director he really understands the the complexity mm. of what it is to be at the forefront of contemporary um, f fashion and and it's a, it's a new way of thinking about being a designer and I think he's great I yeah he's a very modern designer he's sense, a very modern designer yeah yeah, yeah it's absolutely. interesting that you mentioned that kind of um, that androgyny because that's something I want to talk about and it's quite a heavy topic for a Saturday <laughs> afternoon we can do it <laughs> which is you know androgyny is a word that gets thrown around a lot mm. when people refer to his work but mm. I think you're completely correct mm. it's not mm. as simple as that what, no. he doesn't just play with androgyny it's more no. this idea of a shared wardrobe of, yeah. of what is appropriate for a man yeah. to wear what's appropriate for a woman to wear who, who are the great people that have played with that before and what makes what he do, does so new that's a big question but Mario what's your take on his kind of I suppose the key, you know, when you think of who was the designer that was the breakthrough with androgyny, it was Saint Laurent, mm. as in Saint Laurent himself, rather than Saint Laurent the na label now. And, and actually, mm. just as Francis was talking, I was thinking, though, that only went one way. So yeah. that was all about, you know, the shock of women in trousers, which, yeah. you know, seems ridiculous now that mm. if I was dressed like this, I would be turned away from a restaurant. Mm. I mean, how ridiculous. Mm. But what I'm looking forward to in this is the idea that this is someone who's taken menswear into women's wear but women's wear into men's mm. wear yeah. Yeah. and that's going to be quite new to me yes. mm. yeah i mm. think it's it's a really interesting time for this and i actually was working on a piece this week to do with new masculinity and it was to do with this idea that actually you know men's roles are changing sort of at mm. home in the workplace and it was okay. saying actually you know that's partly responsible for this thing that they're sort of dubbing um you know ornamental masculinity you know, hence why all of a sudden you've got kind of like menswear shooting up sort of double the sort of um, the sales figures mm. are kind of dub doubling women's in luxury fashion now. Mm. So all of a sudden you've got kind of, you know, major department stores beefing up their menswear departments. So you've got kind of all of a sudden you're going to have kind of equal menswear departments and women's wear mm. departments. And I was speaking to quite a few buyers about this. And they were saying that, yeah, they were saying absolutely. They, they said, you know, we still think we're going to have two different departments purely because you've got so much product now that you have to have them as separate mm. departments. But they totally said they see people now mm. crossing over crossing in over, both yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and yeah, it kind of amazed. Yeah, and they, they exactly talked about it that way. They talked about it as crossover dressing, not androgynous, androgynous dressing, not kind yeah. of, it's not about being sexless, it's about people borrowing from each other's wardrobe. So when you say crossing over, do you mean like men buying from women? Yeah, uh, and, we, yeah women and, and, and women buying from men's, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously with some things it's a lot easier than others, I mean, you're talking mm. about things like knitwear and, and sort of, you know, uh, but uh, knitwear, outerwear, are actually like quite huge, huge amounts of product. Mm. And yeah, a lot of these buyers were saying they were definitely seeing, seeing that. And yeah, exactly, that it wasn't about this kind of sexless, mm -hmm. androgynous, sort of alien, you know, I think it's interesting also because you tend there's all the sort of history of the idea of the sort of the dandy or the mm. peacock male, but actually that's mm. not the same thing either because yes there is this sort of sense of, of, of greater colour. You know, I was thinking about some of the student work that was grad we had graduating yesterday, amazing yeah. colour and things like that. But they were still very much a menswear mm. suit collection, mm. and I think that's the that's also quite interesting. And I wonder sometimes whether. You, you also get some really interesting cultural references coming in at the moment, thinking, you know, we've got the 
global fashion. Oh, you think about yeah. what's happening in Africa, for example, and the sort of extraordinary colour and mix of patterns mm. and things like that that you'll have mm. happening there with, in menswear. So there's a sort of sense, absolutely, this mm. idea of, of, of what is menswear now mm. and, yes. what is, and conversely, what is women's wear? Because I think the other side of it is that everybody mm. is looking for a new injection in women's wear, and that's what I think yeah. he, he's bringing, bringing particularly. Because yeah. I thought it was really interesting with the Wang show, actually. I think, yeah. you know, with compared to with the autumn winter show that was last week, compared to spring summer, you know, because spring sam summer, I mean, there were some common themes, but spring summer, if you, especially if you looked at the casting and the styling, mm. we didn't actually talk that much about. We didn't, there was so much else to talk yeah. about. Um, but with the styling, you know, there, there was a lot of that was. Um, you know, this kind of art women that were sort of this urban army of sort of, of women and actually the styling was kind of very straight, you know, before the season before, sorry, to go back a bit, was the kind of Erin Watson girls, his sort of coterie of sort of dishevelled sort of downtown girls, but mm. quite sort of sex pot girls at the mm. same time. Mm. And they all looked sort of really hot. And the girls this time, like, they were, they were amazing, but you could mm. all of a sudden, there was, there was a much more of a sort of tomboy element, which was mm. quite interesting for Wang, because mm. although obviously he's been sort of, you know, very much sort of precision cuts and things like that, I thought just his woman all of a sudden had gone from being kind of quite overtly sexy to all mm. of a sudden you could see that crossover in his woman. Um, and I just, yeah, I mm. thought that was really mm. notable with him. Mm. I suppose the last bastion of male-female dressing is the skirt, isn't it? It's gonna, it still mm. feels like quite a long time before we're going to see men sort mm. of, you know, just assuming that a skirt is as much part of their wardrobe as everything else. Mm. But J.W. Anderson has actually addressed that in his last few shows, and mm. there was resistance to that. But that for me is, you know, when, when you, we see men every day in skirts, you can just men say, wow. Men look so good in skirts. They yeah. do. Yeah. 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 Why is it a taboo? Yeah. Like, if, you know, one mm. of the older things of dress, you know, a, a kilt, that kind of dress, mm. is it looks so good on a man. So why are mm. we so resistant to it? I'm, I'm having my it. kind of Scottish heads coming on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, if Scotland gets independence, maybe men up there should all <laughs> start doing it. But I should think be we more see that skirt more, that silhouette, you know, even mm. if you look at it, I think streetwear is actually really interesting in this discussion about, you know, the dandy and what's appropriate for for sort of men versus women, because actually I think some of the shapes we see in street with those really oversized tops that almost look like a tunic dress and even kind of a really baggy pair of shorts worn with kind of tight leggings underneath, you know, that Givenchy look that kind of exploded. Mm. That on men did look like a skirt. It was quite mm. an effeminate silhouette in some ways, which was ironic because it was a hyper-masculine look. Yeah. And I think that's a kind of area which is quite interesting to see this blurring of how of how men versus women dress. It's not just in kind of the high fashion designers, it is in the streetwear. I think that's where mm. you're seeing a lot more of a kind of androgyny coming. And we did a Hood by Air panel this time. And obviously Shane Oliver there plays with, with that a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm interested with J.W. Anderson because I think he's quite removed from that. He's quite traditional in some sense, you know, yeah. in the way he, he has works. very clean looks as yeah. well. And I think also it's not just about this sort of playing around with, you know, who wears what. Mm. But it's also the, the fabrics. And I think that's the other thing that he that he's doing is mm. he, he really mixes the fabrics. He's always, I mean, it's interesting because I think his, his grandfather was a textile manufacturer. So mm. he's about understanding that play within textiles, which I think mm. is, and he always seems to do something really new, mm. either because of the way he's treating it or the way he's combining it. So that's the other factor. So it means that if he is dealing with this, these sort of redefinitions about w whether you're wearing a skirt or whether you're wearing platform shoes, if you're male or female, it's also to do with the fabric. It's not just mm. the fact that he's playing with, with what the garment is. It completely. Mm. And it's mm. interesting as well that we were talking about this idea of something being sexless before, because I feel like there's always, it's quite a British thing, but he, he there's always something quite sexual about what he does. Yeah. And he's even looked at that explicitly. Yeah, he's looked yeah. at kind of perversion. It doesn't feel like he's, it doesn't feel like that kind of, as you said, yeah. sexless androgyny. <clears throat> because it's not, mm. obviously his clothes are never sexy, you know, they're never pretty yeah. particularly, yeah. they're never yeah. sexy. But there's still that idea of kind of sex there in mm. a way, even if it's slightly because it's slightly repressed or mm. there's some kind of um, element of, yeah, repression or disguise or, you know, concealment or thing, you know, you always kind of feel like it's there as an underlying thing, yeah. which is probably quite a British thing as yeah, well. You know, yeah. how quite often you'll either, things are either sort of sutured or they're sort of strapped in or there's mm. that kind of, not, not a sort of full on bondage, but you mm. get that sense with mm. that there's something there that's kind of being held back. And I think yeah. that's, that's, I would say that's definitely without sort of totally psychoanalyzing here, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's definitely a mark of sort of a British design yeah. head yeah, in so a way. I was thinking about a dress in one of the collections, perhaps the last one, it was, it was really, really quite nun-like, and then it mm. was slit to mm. yeah. almost mm. the crotch. Yeah. Mm. And it's a very sort of aggressive sexuality mm. in a way, it's a very challenging. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Liam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God yeah. for you. Oh, yeah, it's Sometimes yeah. I completely forget. 
This is, well, that really illustrates yeah. what you were just saying, though, Belle, because if you look at that kind of corsetry on that yeah. first yeah. look, it's a very kind of traditional corset, very yeah. sort of an so underwear you, shape. So you actually get a kind of really female silhouette, but then obviously yeah. it's right up to the neck, so there's very yeah. little flesh that you can see, mm. then you get just a strip And, and also, back. there's an awkwardness in that the breasts are actually on the clothing, posi positioned lower than the actual breast, so yeah. there's an awkwardness yeah. as well as a, you know, it looks slightly slipped down. I, I think also awkward it's a is such a, a astute word, it just to all, say. Yeah, it is too. Because again, he's playing with the feminine shape, but mm, the yeah. fabric that he's using is also, as you were saying, it comes back to this idea of, of constraint. Mm, yeah. Be because yeah, the fabric isn't yes. very fluid, it's, yeah. it's quite stiff, but it is accentuating the, the female form. One thing we haven't mentioned yet, which is obviously, it's, it's kind of old news now because fashion moves so fast, but the LVMH investment in his label, which his menswear was the first time he showed since that. Um, and I think pretty much every single review noted how much more sort of um, refined his finishes mm. and fabrics felt and I think you see that with this mm. as well and I, that's yes. part of the reason I was really excited to see this show was to see that in his men's where it was just so satisfying to see someone with such a creativity but then also to have that ability to it doesn't happens so fast, doesn't it, when money mm, comes into a company. Yeah. You can almost mm. see money. Mm. Mm. I mean, I think we felt that with, with Christopher Kane when he had the injection of money, that it just went up a notch. And this is looking very refined. Mm. Well, you could, I can imagine him being a real sort of like a kid in a candy shop um, with that kind of investment, because mm. as you were saying, you know, he's always been obsessive mm. about materials. Mm. Even like going, you know, I remember there was all those comments about when he created that thing that was basically, it was like, looked like neoprene, and but he probably could have used print yeah. neoprene, but he'd gone through about 6,000 processes yeah. to get to there because yeah. he's obsessed with it. Yeah. And so of course having the backing of a house like um, you know, LVMH, where it's almost, I guess, like walking into an atelier where you can have whatever you want, no. yes. um, it's probably a total dream come true, isn't mm. it? But because he's got such a strong will, you can almost see yes. that. Mm. These are it's knowing what to say no them. to as well as what to say oh, yes definitely. to, isn't it, when yeah. you've got everything. Yeah, that's very, I think that's a really astute point because it doesn't feel like he's yeah, just taken everything. It feels like he's just used the resources available to him to do things that he perhaps always wanted to do to but just couldn't. Interrupt yeah. and say, yeah. Yeah, "I kind of love that." Yeah. 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 So it reminds me of his uh, really early gorgeous. work. You know that dress that really kind of ballooned, uh, sort of swelled his fame, which was that button-through dress that he did that had those kind of pleat fronts. It reminds me of sort of some of his really early work, which but is nice. I mean, I, I also love the fact that you get the layering, but also the cutting away, and mm. he's not compromised. You know, he's got this investment, but he's he's still being uncompromising in terms of what he's doing, and some of the sort of origami sort of feel to some of the mm. clothes, which is mm. also really exciting. So they're just so beautiful, mm. and you feel as though you're seeing something quite new, um, which is so difficult these days. Yeah. These are nice, aren't they, as well? The sort of slightly balloon-shaped sweaters yeah. that mm. slightly echo some of the stuff in the menswear, Oops. actually. And I love that apron shape that he has in front of his Yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. It's very evening wear focused, or perhaps evening wear simplistic, because I don't think women dress like that anymore, but we're seeing it's dress upon dress upon dress upon mm. dress, and we're yeah. used to seeing quite, mm. sometimes quite a short mm. silhouette from him mm. as well, but some of those dresses before they were practically a ball gown, which is quite mm. fun to see. But but that's an, sorry, no, you go on. <laughs> <But> that's <laughs> another thing about how things are just merging, isn't it? We've talked earlier about men's and women's wear, yes. but the notion of dressing for day or dressing for night yeah. now seems yeah, really yeah. old-fashioned. Because yeah. old yeah. you've got these shoes that are sort of grounding everything. Taking away I, from the evening I have to say, this does feel like a really um, female-focused collection to me. I know that might sound obvious, but I was kind of wondering. Oh, I say that now. This comes that out. comes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering uh, with the menswear because obviously he does tend to sort of echo. Um, you know that there's a parallel between the two connect collections that, that's much more. Um, obvious than some other designers, um, so I was wondering with some, you know, there were some quite sort of effeminate shapes and styles in the in the menswear. Whether we'd actually get some much more boyish things here, mm. which is quite interesting. That um, having just come back from Japan and seeing an amazing exhibition about on kimonos, that idea mm. of the, of yeah, the sort of wrapping yeah, that you've got and the layering completely. that you have, which again picks up on that idea of the restraint yeah. because mm. you, yeah. you have that, and again yeah. the interesting mm. textiles. Something that's actually quite it's that idea of um, a, you know restraint and eroticism mm. actually yes. being quite closely tethered mm. together. Mm. Do we like what we're seeing? Because he always mm, does yeah. this. He, yeah, he always sparks it. enough for debate, but does it make you want these clothes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Quite a few I would yes. like to wear. Oh, Actually, <laughs> probably more yeah. so than the two, two, two uh, SS14, Spring Summer 14. Though, right? <coughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a more difficult collection, I think, that one, with all those baby dolls and the yeah. Cream, it was yeah. yeah, because I do think, you know, if we were to say anything kind of critical about him whatsoever, I have felt in the past there's been some things where you almost feel like the, the idea of the woman 
you know, as, as the person wearing this item of clothing, would it kind of gets lost, almost becomes like quite an abstract con concept, yeah. almost like you get so obsessed with the clothing and doing something kind of conceptual with it, yeah. that the woman kind of becomes this abstract afterthought. And yeah. actually when I look at this, I find it a bit easier to, mm. to sort of overlay myself onto this in a yes. way. Definitely. There is that slight feeling though that we're watching fashion drawings. Mm. Like, I, I'm really loving a lot of what I'm seeing, but they're, does he draw very well? Because he's. It, the, he does, this he's looks done. to me like someone that draws. He does have exquisitely, he does, and that's a two-dimensional. We actually have some in the shop that we can <laughs> share. <laughs> 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 he draws really, really yeah, beautifully. Mm. I mean, that is. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. It does remind me the way he plays with fabric. Really makes me think of, his, of the Japan, the great Japanese designers, mm. Mm. and also that sort of sense of, of the the restraint and the I think Japanese designers are kind of everywhere on the runways. You know, it's kind of ironic going to a yoji show now because yeah. it feels so familiar but yeah. I think what's nice with what Jonathan does is he does it in a way that you said this before Francis so I'm kind of repeating but it feels new yeah, even it though it's, it's kind I of guess it is yeah. new to him I mean mm. that that's the perpetual yes. rhythm of fashion that things come back but they're new to the people that you know mm. he's not old enough to have felt the excitement of the Japanese so mm. it's, it is completely new it's mm. um, very strong. Mm. It was very short. It was very, it was very short. Yeah. I think it was edited, yeah. which I like. Yeah. I, I like that with him. Yes. It's a very kind of clear. The crowd there looks uh, slightly stunned, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just they exhausted do. already. <laughs> it is quite interesting thinking about some of the other things that are around at the moment. I was at Holly Fulton this morning, so mm. quite a lot of embellishment and digital print. And you think there, this is very restrained, yeah. really paired yeah. back, yeah. all about the cutting and the mm. shape and the fabric, mm. without any embellishment. You think about some of the Prada and things. Yeah, at the yeah, moment. yeah. There's a lot of decoration going mm. on. Yeah, which yeah. he doesn't and do. And which he does, and yeah. I think that was, was an even more so, and again, maybe coming back to this point about the investment that he's had. Mm. Um, I love that waist that he's done, yes. that kind of, that look I think was my favourite, the green and the kind of camel, kind of with that exposing the clavicle with the waist, that feels yeah. very new to me, yeah. you know, I don't think I've... But these these two, the black jacket and the grey with the extended obies, mm. oh, you just want yeah. to see those with those being worn, yeah. 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 definitely. Yeah. With the lapels as well from the sort of suit jacket. I think yeah. there's that one with the, yeah. the slightly off the shoulder mm. works really yeah, well as well. Really well because you've almost got like a shadow of the dress on top so you've got that sort of double layering thing and the off the shoulder which is kind of um, a rare yes. touch of flesh for him. Oh. Excellent. It's a very quick mm. catwalk bow. Yes. Oh, no. He's running off to do the Loewe collection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got <laughs> running away to do one of <laughs> <laughs> So we're impressed. It seems like... We're yes. all inspired and impressed by what we've seen, mm. more so than the people sat there. I think they all, as you I said, I was they impressed were actually to see who's there because, of course, half of them they got stuck, stuck in Newcastle. In, yeah. yeah, I just saw Hamish Bowles obviously did mm. survive yeah. being up on the tower. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Have you guys been on Twitter? Everyone is because um, they had to all the, as Marion said, all the people flying back from New York to London. Yeah. They got diverted to Newcastle, so they were all yeah. stuck there. And You're getting quite northern, as you say. My parents are from Manchester, so I, that's why I have a kind of funny half northern. Um, I've got a really great vision of them now eating like battered Someone pizzas tweeted, and battered I just saw Hamish Bowles in Greg's, which yeah. I think <laughs> was Did a you joke. see the, the, hashtag, the hashtag Bob on the time? No. <laughs> um, that's actually why I haven't finished my deadline today. I was so <laughs> just looking at all the jokes and looking at the funny photos it's that people so have faked It's so funny, can you imagine them all just yeah. being there? Like, what is this? <laughs> so this is probably, they're probably glad to be in the safety of Jonathan Anderson's arms after mm, that. Yeah. But yeah, we're impressed by what we've seen there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Is this what we expect from him or did, I said there were some pieces in there that felt new to me. Was it the same for, did it feel new or did it just feel like an extension of what he does? But I do recognise J.W. Anderson themes. Mm. I mean, there is a continuing narrative to what he does. Mm. I think it's interesting that idea of the transition from menswear into womenswear. I think mm. the thing for me was, it was, like, it was very much more to do with the idea of, of the woman, of women's wear. Yeah. Mm. The, mm. I was expecting something that was probably, again, that mm. legacy of, of the sort of playing more, whereas mm. this, as you were saying, far more dresses. I yeah, mean, yeah. It was almost all exclusive. It feels dresses. like it's speaking to women more yes. than some of the previous yeah. collections. Because yes. I remember when we did, I actually think, we did it, didn't we? We were doing it at Selfridge as well yeah, the last season, time. Yeah. And I remember um, Brick Start Smith was like, really quite rightly said, there was that one particular dress that almost had the kind of ruching right down the middle. Are you talking about the flesh colour? Yeah. yeah, and we were all a bit yeah. like, oh, let's be honest, like, yeah. that would look <laughs> horrifyingly <laughs> bad on any woman, really. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately, yeah. Yeah. you know, sometimes I think when we're now analysing these sorts of things, you you kind of gloss over those things. And you, you remove just yourself as aware of it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. What do you, you think, of though, of this the dropped bust, this 
when we're looking at it again. I'm intrigued by that as an item mm. because I want to understand if that's a styling thing or if that's fully connected. I want to know if that is just a corset or if that is a kind of a, a top that's been styled with a corset. I think that's what I'm intrigued by. But I also question whether on when that goes into production, whether the bust yeah. wouldn't be as dropped. Mm. Or whether yeah, it would absolutely. even remain. And yeah. Yeah, that's, the other, that's the other side, isn't it? I mean, because there is the idea of the sort of what you see on the catwalk yes. and then what mm. gets edited mm. out, yeah. Yes. Yeah. which is quite interesting. Because actually, it? after, actually just yesterday, because I remember we did the talk on um, spring, summer, um, and then I, I tried to see what was actually taken up by stores, and mm. which, what is taken up by stores is the most accessible separates. Mm. Yes. You know, I didn't see that beige dress in one store, no. at least yeah. online. I don't know yeah. if yeah. it has a physical presence. I think that's always a difficulty with Jada Benson because I think he comes under quite a lot of flack for what goes out on the catwalk and people say it's very sort of um, yeah, avant-garde as we've mentioned we've all talked about that menswear collection with the ruffles you know they've got yeah. quite a lot of um, yeah quite a lot of flack but even he has sort of expressed um, annoyance with what gets picked up in store because it does create a very different Jada Anderson. I think someone that yes. would follow an online retailer but perhaps not follow the shows would have a very different opinion to Jada Anderson. They'd very see a lot of kind of slogan sweatshirts with that lovely yeah. little logo he has. Yeah. So in, in that yeah. context, it's almost like the catwalk show becomes a statement of intent. And I think so. Possibility mm. and mm. brand building in mm. a way that mm. you know the online selection doesn't. Mm. The online selection is about sales, mm. whereas this is about going. This is who I am. This mm. is what I look for. And mm. And so he's very good at that thing. brand building, isn't he? It is, it is, it is about building that. the brand. Yeah. I mean, you, and this is where, you know, I was saying, I, I really believe, you know, he is one of the, the greatest examples of, of what it is to be a contemporary yeah. young fashion designer because mm. it is about understanding how you have to build mm. the brand and, and maybe is maybe he's he's in I think he's also said that he wants to have his brand that will outlast him mm. yeah. Yeah. so you have a sense that he, this is what he's doing that mm. okay yeah. it may not sell so much um, Designers but actually of his, you know, his era are so self-aware yeah, mm. they are. aren't they yeah. I mean just the notion so of going yeah. this is going to outlast yeah. me yeah. it's, it's like going to be 90 is. years it's the Craig Davis phenomenon is, isn't yeah. it when yeah. Craig Davis and I yeah. almost yeah. step by step I'll yeah. never forget that when Craig David said well, you know I'm not a pop star I'm a brand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but only really because he was like it was one of the first people that said yeah well hands up I admit it and you're right yeah. it's exactly that same yeah, kind of thing that all of a sudden but you know as you've said Francis he he's obviously very self-aware in that respect, but yeah. he's self-aware in a good way in that he's obviously, especially now he's gonna start working with Loewe, yeah. that he's keeping his signatures intact. So mm. he's almost, it's almost like self-preservation yeah. in a way mm. with his collection. So I think you can see there's enough of him in yes. this. Mm. Yes. Um, It'd be I mean, interesting to see what he does with Loewe, mm. because yes. their fabrics yeah. always are always so extraordinary as well, mm. aren't they? And interesting here, of course, not a bag, that that, yeah, yeah which is yeah. funny, because that, that old the brand moment. building yeah, thing yeah. of you've got to, you know, mm. there's got to be a bag in every hand, which looks so tired now, yeah. but I guess, Loewe is one of the places where it won't look tired because mm. their leather's superb. He did bucket bags at the men's and everyone did, as you said, everyone yeah. was like, oh, he's at Loewe, of course he's done bags. So I, I was actually very surprised by the, the mm. lack of accessories mm. completely because he did a lot of bangles and bags at the men's. But I guess that's him again, mm. showing mm. what's for a man's, yeah. What for, yeah. what's for a men's yeah. collection, what's for a woman's collection. His footwear is always really strong. It always makes a statement and it, you know, it really transforms his pieces um, mm. in a very, very um, powerful way. Mm. And are we, are we surprised by the sheer number of dresses? We did talk about yeah, this during, but yeah, even I going am, through really it with surprised. images. I'm really surprised. I was expecting far more trousers. Because mm, mm. he, does, he, he does a nice trouser as he well, does, you know, yeah, especially for a woman, a nice cigarette pad. And he's done a lot of, you know, those kind of the, sh the shorter length skirts, which I think have done very well for him. Yeah. Whereas a lot of this almost looks like occasion wear. You can imagine sort of a cool young woman wearing this on a red carpet or something, mm. which is not a foray he's really explored much before. Mm. Maybe that's mm. also the brand building thing, though. Yeah. You know, it was weird entering into the, the weeks of big brand building with the BAFTAs, exactly. you know, tomorrow yeah, and then yeah. the Oscars almost upon us that maybe some very modern girl's gonna wear one. I, I don't remember yet yeah. seeing Jo W. Anderson on a red carpet. No, I don't. Mm. But that's become such an important mm. way to get investment, although yeah. I mean, of course he has the, the LVMH investment, but to to get the money in, mm. it's the people that are watching that red carpet or the Met Ball really mm. much more mm. often than watching shows no, like these, these dresses, dresses <coughs> I mean you can see some of the you know you can imagine some of the sort of 
um, on the music industry mm. side, there would be people wearing some of his yes. clothes because they've got that sort of edginess. Mm. To yeah, them. and if you look at the styling here, you know it's very pared back. The hair and makeup is extreme, but makeup is extremely pared back. Yes. You know, you couldn't be couldn't be less so. And the shoes as well. You know, obviously there's there's very little accessorisation. That actually these could be restyled feasibly. Where there's yeah. some of his other. Um, sort of looks couldn't be restyled. It was almost mm. like you have to take them wholesale or not at all. Mm. Whereas I feel like here all of a sudden mm. there's like a little bit of leeway, whether that's conscious or not, I don't know. Um, but exactly, I think, yeah, mm. thinking about the music industry thing, mm. I think completely, mm. I think these some of these could be, um, yeah, translated in a much mm. more kind of glamorous way, in a way yeah. actually, because yeah, yeah, this is deliberately quite sort of aesthetic in a way, quite yeah. austere. There are some earlier looks, if you can scroll sort of backwards, which were actually quite revealing. I thought that there were some of my favourites, so the, it was showed off the midriff, it was sort yeah. of yeah. slightly, a bit earlier, it was kind of right at the start, sorry Liam, <laughs> he hates it when I do this. Yeah, these yes, ones, those yes, in yes, black yes, and yeah. white, which actually yes. I think, I'm interested by how um, the different the different types of women he's playing with in this collection because there's definitely sort of that Marnie Prada woman who's intelligent and she's intellectual and she likes to wear fashion that doesn't sort of show off her sexuality too much she's very much kind of a, a cerebral dresser and he definitely got that but then this is very young yeah. and playful mm. and very yeah that's actually quite sexy for him in the more yeah and you have way. to think that you know we're looking at this on on um, a catwalk model which is mm, a very yeah. different sort of breed of, of women to you know the casting for a show like this it's very different mm. to if we saw this on a red carpet on an actress mm. for instance mm. um i mean look nine would work well on a red carpet, i think mm. more so than seven and eight yeah, yeah that's that's nine would look very fantastic yeah. wouldn't it? it's interesting when we talk about the red carpet though because it gets me thinking when you think of J.D. Anderson, you think of him you think of jonathan you don't think of women which actually with a lot of other brands you know you you think of the the girl who wears mm. it, you know, and you can really mm. identify a woman, you can, whether it's a celebrity or someone else. But with Jonathan, it's actually quite hard to do that. Maybe it is because it's Belsa that hasn't been taken up on the red carpet that much, but it's quite hard to think of a, yeah. a, a J.D. Anderson and girl. And maybe who's, that's true. Who's the kind of younger, not that she's old, but the younger kind of Tilda Swinton? Mm. I mean, who well, is Carrie the, Mulligan. I mean, yeah. 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 Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan. That's her. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, as you say, look number nine. Yeah. Or Amara Rooney or, or someone yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think that's the thing with him. It's quite a strength, though, that he's kind of removed himself from wearability in his shows. Because we talked about that before yeah. with what you see online, the sale is very different because it does kind of make his fashion seem more intellectual. And yeah. I think that's been part of his... His strength. Yeah, it feels very determined. Yeah, it does mm. feel. Yeah, it's determined really, is a good word. Really planned and mm. strong and mm. thought mm. through. And the other thing that proves, he, you know, he can do wearability very comfortably is is in his collaborations. Yeah. Because his collaborations are always really. I'm thinking Topshop was almost every piece was completely desirable. Yeah. And then we were just talking about his well Sunspell, but also he's just done a collection for Mr. Porter, and mm. that is really still very beautiful. Really beautiful. Yeah, well, a lot of jumpers with sort of um, the anchor on. And mm. I think so he can do really yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Well Sunspell's such a good example of that, which is this yeah. kind of quiet thing that he, d you know, I don't yes. know if that many people are aware of this yeah. work at Sunspell, but it's so kind of, and I, I question, I think it must have been really important to what he's doing at his own level, because I think it's just, it's taught him the beauty of kind of great fabrics and amazing basics, yes. and that's probably been really helpful. There's a real sense of fluidity, I'm thinking mm. as well, with these, mm. whether that's too an obvious thing to say, I don't know, but only because some of his work is so kind of architectural, yeah. that you almost look at them like these kind of static looks, you know, almost like set in stone, where with these, even with the kind of kimono ones, with the big wrap around the middle, yes. you still get that kind of really beautiful fluid shape that, you know, you feel like they're designed to be seen in motion, which again is a little bit more real, mm. if yes. I can use that term, than some of his other work. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's felt like it's there to be sort of on a pedestal um, and viewed as kind of, you know, I, I mean, because it's ironic in a way that he always says that he doesn't view his fashion as art and he doesn't ever think it should be. Mm. But really, no, I think that is quite ironic because of all the designers we'll probably discuss over these panels, it's probably the most, the most yes. Yes. That, you know, yes. pure art pieces in a way. Mm. And the but fact that it, it, it is all about the silhouette, I mean, yes, we've got these slightly patterned pieces here, but mm. it's so much about the shape of mm. it where 
in, in recent seasons, because of the explosion of printing, so much, as, as you were saying, mm. yes. so much of it mm. has been, you can almost hide behind incredible mm. prints. Mm. And yeah. they look so exciting when you first see them. But yeah. these are, you kind of linger on these a bit longer, I think. Mm. Which, which, um, which one's going to be the pattern piece for Show Studio? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, he's already been so generous in giving us one. Which actually, I love that piece. I was trying to shoehorn myself into it, it didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful but that's it's right it's interesting to talk about that kind of that lack of embellishment thing that he does because he mm. is just fanatical about construction which i yeah. think is something that's missing yeah. in a lot of mm. yeah a lot of younger designers even if like i love loads of the people showing with with fashion east but i think particularly in women's wear you know when you look at a lot of the young designers work it's all kind of it's so surface level and yeah. it was intriguing because I went to the Central St Martin show last night and, and that kind of construction thing seemed to be yeah. a big part of what they were all excited you know, it's about. it's funny because nice. um, I won't say who it is but um, someone I'm speaking to that designs a lot especially back in the day for the music industry mm. and they were saying they really missed um, designers these days not being kind of like McQueen type designers that would actually design on the body and would start mm. shaping things and building mm. things mm. and this person was saying to me that they felt that you know there were so many young designers where they felt that it was all just about kind of drawing and sketching these things mm. and then putting them out to production mm. somewhere else mm. and yet JW Anderson exactly as you're saying is mm. someone where you feel like mm. it's literally crafted and sculpted or mm. you know around the body and mm. You know whether that does make it sometimes almost super architectural, too mm. architectural for some people. Um, it serves as long-term purpose, though, as mm. you were saying. You know about him wanting to be a brand mm. that making clothes like this, where they're tough, you can't rip these off. Mm. Mm. You and you know we no, live in an age where you know this, yes. there are people watching this who will be trying to rip it off. You know, yeah. They'll yeah. have done something yeah, by the time absolutely. we walk out away from these yeah. chairs. But this is very, very difficult yeah. to translate, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. it then therefore stays his. Mm. I think that's what's so, again, one of the things I always find so fascinating is that, as you said, a lot of people think of fashion as being two dimensional in the sense you start with a drawing. Mm. Yeah. But in actual fact, you know, clothing is all three dimensional and it's more closely allied to architecture. And I think mm. you really see that in, in this. And I, I think that's a really, really strong point that mm. you can't easily rip this off. They are. Mm. Um, it's quite really significant. It's quite way. satisfying, isn't it, mm. to see? A, you know, this mm. is high fashion. You do want yes. to see. I mean, again, I won't say which which sign it was from <laughs> New York, but <coughs> I do find it a bit disappointing when you do see things where you're like, well, yeah, you know, but it's really just a kind of long skirt and it's a jumper mm. and actually, you know, and you're a bit like, yeah, it's so you know, it's it's, it's a nice concept. And it, mm. to me, I almost think. It's basically been styled really well. Mm -hmm. Design-wise, yes. is it a great design? Mm -hmm. An example of a great designer? I'm not so sure, mm -hmm. actually. Whereas with this, you're kind of, you know, this mm -hmm. you're looking at the designer, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he well, uses, I love the way he uses the ruching to build volumes of space in sort of unusual parts of the body, like that sort of neckline. He's always very creative with his neckline. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, yeah, it's really architectural. I mean, I think, yeah, this unexpected. Is and sometimes it looks a bit awkward as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. awkward thing, because like you were that. saying that before, and yeah. I thought that's mm. such a good description of him, because mm. I'm sure they probably won't be massive sellers, those, but you do feel like they need to be there. They do have a place. Mm. It's mm. like in his, his collection's like a family, and it's like the, you have to have the entire family, yeah. even if only, you know, a few things are actually going to get sold from it. But this feels, it's quite, a lot of people said this about his menswear, because obviously because it was with those heels, everyone kind of looked at it and was like, oh gosh, mm. it's very challenging. But actually it was one of those collections where I pull it apart and there wasn't much to be afraid of. And I think that's quite similar with this. You know, those looks that we were just talking about, like, like mm. that beautiful white one there. You imagine, wear that with a pair of black cigarette trousers yeah. and actually yeah. that would look really yeah, quite yeah. simple. Yeah. 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 And I think si since the investment, there's been more of a kind of commercial bent to what he's doing on the runway as well as, you know, as we were talking, he's In really menswear as well as women's wear? I think so. I thought that with the menswear particularly this season, I, mm -hmm. I think, which sounds ironic because he put it with those high heels, which got a lot of kind of, oh my gosh, how unwearable is this? But actually, as individual pieces, a lot of it was, there was a lot of really great knitwear in there, some of the really lovely jackets, and you thought it was styled to be difficult. I think mm -hmm. he likes to be yeah. difficult, but it mm -hmm. didn't feel like the pieces themselves were, were sort of particularly... Um, uncomfortable. That thing about him liking to be difficult is so true, isn't it? But because I think, I think it makes him a bit, <clears throat> a bit kind of, a bit more impenetrable mm. in a good way. And again, in that sort of talking about that thing of bit self-preservation. And if you're in it for the long haul, you have to have some kind of ticks of not just being open to all comers and mm. sort of you know changing your game mm. because mm. someone invests in you mm. or you know you get certain feedback from people you have to kind of weather the rough with the smooth mm. don't you and I think probably he I imagine probably 
relish is sometimes mm. that criticism. Yeah. You imagine so. he does it, he must do it deliberately, mustn't he? He is yeah. fearless, yeah. 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 and uncompromising, and I think that's yeah. what comes through. And so you get a sense that he's making these moves to you know elements which are you know perhaps more accessible. Not, I mean that's the wrong word, but mm. in a way maybe more akin to the female yeah. form. Actually, that's a decision that he's making, not that he's yeah. being he's not really dictated to do it. To do yeah. it. yeah. It's that Warhol thing of I don't care what they say, I just measure it in inches with him, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He knows how talked yeah. about he is. Um, this is a really hard question. We were kind of saying you know, how celebrated he is and how why he's got such sort of buzz around him and why he will have such longevity. But but is it just pure skill or is it the way that he's sort of conducted his brand? What makes him so special? You know, why is everyone so excited about him? Why is he the one that's got plucked and and had that investment? I think the answer's always the same, actually, why a designer rises up and it's because they have vision. Like that mm. sounds like such a cliche. Mm. But but many designers don't. They have yeah. somebody else's vision or yeah. they have a vision of wanting to be a designer. Mm. Mm. But actually to have a vision of what you want to make and what you mm. want to craft, there's a lot of hard work here. Mm. Was he very hard working at college? He, well, I mean, interestingly <laughs> enough, <laughs> you, know, he, you he can't say if he wasn't. No, he was, <laughs> but also, I mean, he was, all, he, I think he came into college, I think he's quite open about it, like yeah. one day a week, because he was yeah. actually doing an awful lot of work in Prada and, yeah. and working in that. So he's, I mean, he absolutely knew what he yeah. wanted to do. And yeah. I think we all are aware of, of those sort of students, people with talent, in a way you're providing or facilitating yeah. an environment, mm. because actually they know what they're going to do, whether mm. that's, mm. You know, whether you're a graphic designer or you're, you're a painter or a sculptor, and and he's one. You know, I think he has got a vision. And having said that, I mean, if you think about his early shows, they're so different from the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, they're they're almost. I mean, they yeah. sort of lean more towards his theatrical background yeah, they yeah. Do. and yes. taking reference and lots and lots of prints yeah. he used to do. Mm. And he used to be very well known for his paisley. You know? Yeah, exactly. And now all of that has been absolutely eliminated, and the focus is on structure and form. Mm. I mean, he did have. I mean, even in autumn winter. 13 he still had that car crash graphic comic yeah. print here we had that sort of me. look before which was a print but that was it, it was but do you think that's the all. separation growing between the commercial collection and the catwalk because now he's in a, maybe a financial position where he can I think it's to do with growing up yeah. as it's a been, designer yes, I really do I think he's and that's what's really exciting because he's not afi uh, afraid to take chances he's not just yeah. stuck mm. with what people are expecting he's mm. he's moving it on and, and I think that's and, and he really followed his instinct on that, you know, yes. and his instinct was to yeah. move away from this, because it was quite fussy styling, quite yeah. dramatic, yeah. And, and, and he followed his instinct towards this. I think one of the reasons that we love him so much also is that he is, in many ways, a complete package. So he has the vision, mm. but he has the business uh, now, so he's incredibly sussed. He knows when to collaborate. He knows who to pick his collaborations with. I mean, mm. he really is quite a remarkable young man mm. um, in that respect. So yeah, it's, it's kind of where he should be. He's the whole package. Isn't he, he really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's and kind of like get he, that. You he, get someone um, who's creative and a bit, you know. Yeah. It's like he's doing very, very well out of the game without actually fully playing the game. If you know what I mean. Like yeah, he's I do. just about removed enough from it yeah. that he's not sort of kowing to anyone. And yet, yeah, he's doing very well mm. from from this industry. So. Well, I think he doesn't mind being his own man, does he? I don't think he minds ruffling He's a few great. feathers. He doesn't mind kind of, yeah, being ambitious and, mm. and unashamedly am ambitious. And I think that's kind of great. You need that. There's a bit too much kind of pussy yeah. fitting around in fashion. And with him, I think people kind of... These are really womanly. The ones yeah. with the yeah. upper shoulder. Yeah. They're yeah. almost yeah. a little bit reminiscent yeah. of um, Prada a couple of Prada, seasons yeah, ago, definitely. you know, when you almost had that Prada sort of 50s sort ago. of, yeah. yeah. But that, I think that's what's... This that's really new for me, for him. It feels more sensual, this does. You know, yeah. the waist, the kind of the midriff, the, that off the shoulder, the, the longer gowns. I, to me, that, that feels new. There's obviously, there's so much... It's, You'd look at this and you'd know it was Jonathan, but it doesn't feel like he's kind of resting on his laurels, which is really nice. It's like at least you actually get the contours of a woman's body below it, yeah. which for me, that's why this is sort of so much more... Um, of a sort of yeah a, a womanly connection then um i think this this is much i think this is actually much less challenging than the menswear collection yes mm -hmm. i think yeah mm -hmm. can we talk about the influence of yoji yamamoto or am i just <laughs> sort of having an obsessional moment no of course <laughs> <you can. laughs> it's is anyone yeah. else kind of i, I guess because mm. i'm seeing it you know i've admitted that i'm no uh, expert on him and uh, just it's very reminiscent mm. it, which mm. to me of course is a marvelously mm. good thing mm. as a absolute yoji fan but there's definitely that's being thought of, isn't it? I think the thing is, I see that everywhere, that kind of, that, yeah, that Japanese, that kind of mm. 
construction, folding, fabric. I, th I think that's so, it feels so current. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting, I can't, I, forgive me, I can't remember who said it before, but we said this idea that, you know, it feels new for him. And I think that's what's interesting with, with Jonathan. It doesn't feel like he sat and poured over Yoji. It feels like this kind of came to him, mm -hmm. maybe in the way it came to Yoji. Do, do you know what I mean? Because I, yeah. yeah. I think the interesting thing about Yoji is that, again, he's always somebody that, um, I remember somebody saying to me that he was, in a way, a, a, a couturier in the sense that he always had a sense of the overall um, feeling of, of what he was designing um, and could tackle whether it was from you know hats all the way through to shoes. And I think for me that is one of the other factors within this. And he plays with the issues of restraint, which obviously mm. Yoji yeah. plays with, and, mm, yeah. and yeah. revealing and and and, mm. and hiding, mm. and so and and also the interest in fabric. So you've got in a way yes. there are a number of factors which come together. Yeah. But it, but it also feels quite fresh. I mean, and that's. I mean, it is interesting you say that because obviously I'm a great You don't feel that it fan. feels sort of reverential, do you? Do you don't feel it feels copied? No, no I don't think it's copied. I, th I think there's a knowledge of. Mm. But mm. I mean, to be in yeah. the fashion business now and not have yeah. a, a knowledge of the gods who've gone before you when mm. they're mm. F freely available for us all to see would be silly. So I'm sure he's, you know, very mm. aware and very mm. aware of certain shapes. Yeah, so. I totally agree with Francis. I think maybe it's about those kind of shared values. Mm. On the one hand, you've got that kind of concealed eroticism, which is very Japanese in a way. And then on the other hand, you've got this absolute obsession with deconstructing in materials in that kind of origami style. Mm. So therefore put the two things together. And it's no surprise mm. that that's the kind of the sum in, of those in there too, there's this kind of nod to French haute couture, which you also see in mm. Yoji sometimes. Yeah, that kind yeah. of new look yeah. waist. Yeah. And I love that yeah. though. So the, to me, that's the thing that has surprised me about this. And it's kind of, it's a thing that I think you'll keep revisiting throughout the season. And that's what's nice with Jonathan. Mm. We were saying this before, you know, it, it's always a gift that keeps on giving his collections a little bit. You know, they'll mean mm. something different in four days time. They'll mean something different at the end of Milan. They'll mean something different at the end of Paris. And and I think that's quite a strength of a young designer mm. to be able to not just kind of wow you with an immediate visual impact, mm. but to kind of keep you thinking. Yeah, and, he, and he's un another fact that he's unlikely to come out and say outright, this is what inspired this collection in the same way that like Felder Felder will say, mm -hmm. Gerhard Richter inspired mm. this. And so we've actually used the prints on it. You know, it's so literal. Yeah. He's never mm. really going to say that. He's always going to kind of keep you guessing and won't really care. Again, it's almost, again, it's like the modern art analogy. Mm. It's like, you know, I'm putting something out there for you. I'm not going to tell you exactly what's behind it. I'll let you deduce that. Mm. And it's, again, it's, it's the That's person that says a, their work mm. isn't like art. Yeah. For me, it's, mm. it's so much like that but in a way. But he's quite a you say this, I say that kind of guy, which is, is, is very yeah. Prada, you know, like when she, oh, you thought it was yeah. Japanese, not Japanese, yeah. you know, and he, he likes <laughs> yeah. to do that. With that menswear collection that was all the ruffles, he was like, oh, it's all about, you know, construction, traditional menswear, where yeah. are the pockets, where do your hands sit, when everyone else was like, it's men in skirts, you know, yeah. he likes that, <laughs> yeah. and that's the kind of playing the but game. he likes messing with us, doesn't he? Yeah, he likes messing with us, you kind of always sense there would be that sort of chuckle, like with the, the menswear, and you've got those really sort of tight tops and sort of v-necks with the, you mm. know, the, and the, the bangles that are, you know, like uh, silicone okay. rings yeah. or something, oh, yeah. and you kind of feel like, yeah, there, there's a sort of sense of um, feeling quite happy with, with being a bit, um, you know, messing with us. But I think you that's have to no have that humour. Yeah, be, yeah, I think that's I think a really good thing in fashion. Like Definitely. Prada, yeah. Richard Prada, Marc Jacobs, Carl Lagerfeld, they all have that kind of yeah. cheekiness to them. Yeah. That where I think where do you think that. the humour is in this collection? I don't think there's humour in the, the garments themselves. I think there'll be humour in the way he kind of, yeah, he describes them, the way he presents himself. I think you mm. get more mm. obvious humour in the menswear with him, but I think perhaps it's not humour, it's more kind of subversiveness, mm. I think that's yeah. what comes through. I think it's the messing with us, it's yeah. the toying with us. He's yeah. kind of, and maybe it is something as simple as taking a corset and making it dropping kind it. of up, yeah, yeah, dropping it and mm. making it a bit awkward. Mm. That's quite a, a playful thing to do. It's kind of, and also, especially in London, which is a city that can get criticised for showing so many cocktail frocks. Yes. And you know, throughout London Fashion Week, we're going to see a lot of that shape on a lot of other runways where they're kind of pretty scared. Um, and that'll be, what that'll be the idea in itself, just a nice cocktail dress. So for him to kind of take that and, and do something feminine yeah. but in his own way, I think that's relatively playful. Yeah. But then that's the thing, he probably just makes me think too much and he's probably just like to do a corset. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. it's playful yeah. and challenging. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I think is a hard line to, to meet. He pro yeah, I mean, you know, I, he probably wants women that uh, want to be challenged a little bit, Definitely. you know, if it was easy, would, would you, you know, it's like being in a club if you were, uh, do you want to be a club if you were a member? It's that sort of thing. I yeah. only want people in there that are going to kind of work for it work a little bit. It. Yeah. But I quite like this idea of, of 
difficult fashion mm. or kind of awkward yeah. or ugly fashion you know stuff that is hard to wear and you kind of uh, I think that's for me that is I mean that's what I'm always interested in yeah in terms of fashion yeah. as you say and that's the thing I get so tired of the cocktail dresses yeah. and yeah. It really because for me it's not about fashion that's about selling mm. whereas mm. you feel here you know he is challenging people are you going to wear these mm. how are you going to wear them if you want to wear some of it are you going to wear it all and mm. I think that that yeah, really elevates great. the wearer because it makes it them does. brave it does yes. intelligent yes. I went on to one of the online retailers I went to but they basically you know the the top where they had the strap the women's strap where they have the the woman's one of the women's arms is bound to the side yeah, yeah. Basically, on this online retailer, they'd styled it so that the strap was under the arm, so both arms were free. Oh, really? So, so they basically just turned it into a panel across the body. Yeah. And I thought, that's such a cop out. Isn't mm. that's such a, it was like strange to buy it, but then kind of like. <laughs> and then worry about the sexual aspect. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really strange. <laughs> but that's quite funny. I think he'd probably have a chuckle at that, wouldn't he? Yeah, he might do. Or he might go, he cool. might be cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smashing yeah. his laptop <laughs> on the yes. table. It is yeah. great though that Damn you. London, Damn you. I mean, of course yeah. we're, we always tend to be a bit pro-London, mm, don't we? Always? Definitely. Yeah. Um, but there is that, that marvellous thing that you see something in London that's actually unexpected and it happens every season. Mm, we, you know, we gather here in different groups every season yeah. and there's something that's just terrific. It's, mm. I wasn't, I'm not going to diss New York, but <laughs> it, you don't see that in New York. Mm. And yeah, you, you know, don't the, get the rest is, is to come, but this yeah. is a very kind of positive moment for you know we're only on day two and we've already mm. got the great star it's great yeah. oh i think that's a nice note to round things off on a very <laughs> positive one we are only on day two and I'm, I'm so impressed by this i always love what he does but i think this in particular it's a really great season and it's so nice as we said to see that kind of the support he's got from lvmh and how that comes through as well i think that's always so rewarding to see when a young designer is getting that kind of that help so it's brilliant thank yes, you so thank much you. for joining thank me thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs>